Hello and welcome. I got the worst producer ever. My name is Andy, and this is the first ever Sofa Sports Report. This week, we will be focusing on the N NHL, magnificent goals, outstanding hits, great. What? What? I think you're fucking kidding. Oh, you got it. Are you, are you serious? Come on. Uh, I've just been informed the NHL lockout is still going on. Games are canceled to December 30th, which I guess that means we'll have to talk about the next N sport. I'm talking about NFL. As we all know, Michael Vick this year has been playing, eh, we'll call it, like a dog from one of his fighting rings. Yes, that's right. The Eagles have been looking horrible. This week they've faced the Bengals, with the Bengals actually having a chance to get into the playoffs for the first time in a while. They control their own faith. And this week, like I said, they're tied with the, the Steelers. And I'm taking Cincinnati over Philadelphia in a blowout win. Speaking about the Steelers, they take on the Cowpies, or the Cowboys, whatever you want to call it this weekend. It's a battle of America's team, the Cowboys, versus the self-proclaimed team of the world. That's right, team of the world. Ben Roethlisberger, I believe it was, or maybe one of the other knuckleheaded players, decided to go up, come out and say that the Steelers are actually the world's team. With a 3-5 start, the Cowboys actually managed to win their last four out of five games and are actually almost a playoff contention team, except their defense sucks. Uh, with their only loss actually being to the Redskins, who are also a playoff contention team when, under the guidance of RG3, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, big Ben's coming back from big injury. Uh, what, what else is new? He, he always comes back from injuries. It seems like every year he's injured, but... And also, Richard Mendenhall's out. So, Jonathan Dwyer, he's stepping in. And so is Isaiah Redman. And they're actually doing okay. Nothing nothing to, to be all ecstatic about. But when it comes down to it, I'm taking the Steelers in Dallas for the win. It's going to be a close game. And as I mentioned before, RG3. What, what can he say about him? I'm saying he's going to win Rookie of the Year. He's only thrown four interceptions out of 355 passing attempts, which is crazy for, for a rookie. Uh, the only question is, will he be healthy? Last week he hurt his knee. Reports are saying that he will actually be starting on Sunday. And they take on the Browns, which it's the Browns, come on. Even if RG3 didn't play, he'd still win. So I, with that being said, I am taking RG3 and the Washington Redskins over the Browns. Now, I know what you're saying, oh, RG3, Rookie of the Year, yada, yada, yada. Now, you're probably also saying, well, what about Andrew Luck? He, he's having an outstanding year, too. But yeah, his year didn't start off that good, but as of late, he's really coming into it. And we'll, what we'll really have to do is wait and see. The Colts this week take on the Texans in what will be a huge game. The Texans have already clinched a playoff spot. And, or at least, at worst, a wild card spot if they lose out. But with a rookie quarterback following Peyton Manning's steps, uh, Andrew Luck has done phenomenal. I mean, what more can you ask from this kid? It was like Bigfoot shoes you had to fill. Are you okay over there? Bless you. Uh, this week, the, I don't, they're playing the Texans and the, the only ass whooping that the Texans really received this year was from the Patriots, where it was last week and with a final score of 42 to 14. Uh, the Texans will definitely be looking to bounce back, hit Andrew Luck hard, and give the Colts a nice ass whooping, which they could probably do if they wanted to play up to it. Um, I'm going to have to take the Texans pulling the reins on the Colts for the first time and clinch. A uh, better than wild card playoff spot. All right, I'm taking the 49ers to lock up a playoff spot this week and with a win over the Patriots. On to the battle of the abominable, pitiful, horrendous, atrocious, uh, downright shitty teams Oakland and KC. That's right, the Chieftains. This game means a lot. The loser will most likely get the first draft pick 
in next year's draft. Uh, the winner, the pride to say, hey, we're not the shittiest team in the NA in the NFL. That's right, I almost said NHL. I want hockey back. Oakland will somehow sneak out a win this week to beat the Chieftains. Uh, you may be saying, hey, there's another horrible team out there. The Jacksonville Jaguars. With a record match only by the Chiefs of 2-11. and 11. The Jags are also in running for first uh, first overall draft pick. But no easy win left on the schedule. Uh, they play the Dolphins this week uh, in what I call Battle for America's Wang or America's Waiting Room, if, if you so choose. But I like America's Wang. The Finns, they look like they got a promising field, uh, future. Um, some close wins, blowout losses, one or two close games. Tannehill, young stud. Jacksonville, they really got nothing to, sp to speak for this week. Or this year with uh, MJD getting hurt. Uh, there's nothing else really. I'm taking, I'm going to go with the Dolphins on this one. Uh, that's right, there's there's another team, but they're the Buccaneers. They're, they're better than, than those other two teams. Uh, they got Josh Freeman throwing bombs all over the place to Vincent Jackson. Doug Martin running circles around defensive linemen and linebackers. Another young stud, rookie of the year candidate. Uh, this week, the Buccaneers take on the Saints, or those scandalous Saints, if you will. Uh, Drew Brees, he's having a good year, but his receivers are having an off year, dropping a lot of passes. Uh... I am going to say the Bucks take this one. Uh, and that brings me on to my next thing. The worst New York team. What, what was a bigger disappointment this year? Is it the Yankees getting swept in the NLDS to the Tigers and Jeter breaking his ankle? Is it, uh, actually for once I can't even say the New York Islanders like I want to. Uh, it, could it be the New New York Giants uh, playing up to their competition? A sign of a talented team, but not that good. Uh, but nope, the one that takes the cake, the Jets. That's right, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. With a start of 3-5 and five and somewhat promising, they just tanked. I mean, and plus the media's all over. Uh, the media's all over Tim Tebow, Rex Ryan, and his antics. And Mark Sanchez is butt fumble. Uh, he's having a great year for you fantasy guys. And that is sarcasm. Uh, let's see. This week they take on the char uh I don't know who they take on this week. But anyways, this week they take on the t uh, Titans, who haven't been relevant since the early 2000s when they went to the, the Super Bowl. Uh, it's going to be a tight contested game. I am taking the Jets. Yeah, that's right. I said the Jets in a close one. Uh, there's also the Chargers playing the Panthers. Cam Newton, sophomore slump. Phillip Rivers isn't playing up to what he can be. I am taking Cam Newton and the Panthers. And then uh, what else do I have here? Oh, yeah, the Giants. They take on the Falcons. The Falcons have been one of the best teams in the NFC. The Giants, like I said earlier, play up to the competition, which I am actually looking for the Giants to go into Hotlanta and somehow squeak out a win. And Detroit sucks. Detroit. Oh, how I miss hockey. Uh, this week, the Lions head to the desert to take on the Cards. And what can I say about Detroit other than I, I got nothing. Detroit just flat out sucks. Uh... But the Lions will be taking home a win this week and come back to Detroit with a victory. Uh, rookie of the Year voters, they're not counting out Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks. This week they take on the Buffalo Bills. And for you fantasy players out there, don't expect for Fred Jackson to be coming back anytime soon. He's been placed on the IR. C.J. Spiller, however, will be getting the start for and getting significant more carries. But... C.J. Spiller won't be that big of a match for uh, the Seattle Seahawks defense, uh, especially with Pete Carroll being the coach and Marshawn Lynch and Russell Wilson controlling the ball and managing the ball really well. 
I'm going Seattle in a win and most likely going to the playoffs. Uh, let's see what else I have here. Boy, it's time for two of the best comeback players. Johnny Knox. Wait, I'm just kidding. He's still out. Uh, Peyton Manning and Adrian Peterson. Unfortunately, they don't get to play each other this year. But let's start with Peyton Manning. He had that soldier, shoulder and neck injury and all that stuff. And he came back from it stronger than ever. A lot of people said, oh, well, his arm be strong enough. Can he still be the same phenomenal quarterback he's been for as so, so many years in Indianapolis? And, well, he proved everyone correct. He still can be that guy. He's taken what was an okay team at the beginning of the season, and they reeled off uh, eight wins, I believe it is, since week five. They have not lost. Their last uh, game that they lost was to the Patriots, believe it or not. And this week, they look to take on the Ravens, who have been bit by the injury bug. You know, Ray Lewis is out. Terrell Suggs is the, is the latest one. Ed Reed's getting fined for blatant hit, hits to the head. Uh, but they do have Hey Diddle Dill right up the middle. Uh, but he won't be any match for the, the Broncos' defense as long as they can hold them. I'm taking the Broncos in a big victory. And that leads me on to the aforementioned Adrian Peterson. Leading rusher this year with 1,600 yards. Uh, he's got three games left to go to not only break his own single-season rushing record, which was set in 2008, well, 1,760 yards, but also possibly the, uh, the record hold, held by Eric Dickerson back in 1984 of 2,105 yards. Uh, for all you mathematicians out there, you know he needs 505 yards. Uh, but he's got an uphill battle. This week, the Vikings uh, take on Sam Bradford and the St. Louis Rams. The Rams are nothing to really joke about. Their defense is tenacious, to say the least. The offense, on the other hand, isn't the greatest. Uh, but after this week, Adrian Peterson has to face the Packers, and he's still yet to face the Texans. So it's going to be a hard battle for him to break the single-season rushing record. Uh, I am taking Adrian Peterson running wild over the Rams. And now that brings me down to my final matchup, Bears-Packers. Oldest rivalry in the NFL. Throw out the records. Throw your hats off. It's going to be an awesome game, hopefully. Jay Cutler is going to be in the game. Jordy Nelson is going to be out. Uh, what else? Bears got injury bugs. Uh, Packers have injury bugs. There's so many things you could go on and on about. But I am actually going to pick an upset with Bears at home. And I'm going to say the Packers win. And I'm not too happy about it. But anyways, for Geekified TV, I'm Andy. This is Sofa Sports Report. And until next week, fuck you, Gary Pettman. You suck.